what you have is a new formula. That's the formula that I've created. I've done these measurements. I found out what these measurements were in relativity and the other uh, leading uh, branching off theories. And I developed a theory that shows that FTL is possible. Superlinear velocities are are possible, and based on the and that on that commentary. Uh, Alcabre Al warp drive is based on that theory, but again, he limits his velocity to the speed of light. The other thing is positive energy. There's no positive energy. The there's positive magnetic energy that makes up gravitation, but warp space is not made up of this same type. In fact, it's zero point E, zero point energy, which means that we can measure the gravitational state in the Earth, but we can't gra uh, detect any in space. So the idea about a posit positively charged energy in space is thrown out the window. So then there, there does come the theory of negative energy. But negative energy, if you know anything about physics, physics, it takes the same amount of positive energy equal to negative energy to make a charge. You know? So all that space between planets and stars is not negative energy. And that's in my theory also. All this stuff is in my theory. My book illustrates, like I said, the second half of relativity. The first half is gravitational state, which Einstein did, and the non-gravitational state of my book, which is called the Supertalic Electromagnetic Gravitational Universe Technology Theory. In short, spelling, it's called SIGA, the Quanta Physics Study, the first of its kind explaining why FTL is possible. I just explained to you why FTL, fast and light speed space travel, is possible. See, Einstein's equations uh, arrive from gravity. Gravity has a certain dimension, a certain, certain block, a certain uh, barrier, right? If you take that barrier out in a much larger area, then you have a whole new system of equations and all those equations are, are in my book uh, like I said the planets and stars and everything are bits and pieces of a much bigger singularity the universe they, they talk about well we can't go back further than time equals zero because we don't know what happened there but we have what well, we do have an accepted theory which is the creation of the uh, atomic or the cosmic egg which is energy is energy that has was developed it was unstable it kept growing and growing and growing it kept growing and growing and growing because it was unstable there's nothing stopping it. but it did reach what was called critical energy critical energy be, ha, has been measured to be 10 minus 260 which I don't believe it is I think it's a lot more and I think it's more like 10 minus for 520 or 480 or whatever it is uh, 480 uh, to be probably Pacific it's in my book uh, based on the idea that it was a gr in a growing state and only reached that that point the pressure between two points is is a square root of what of what the events is and that in that case that it has to be twice as much as what the beginning point of that energy might be or that density is so I have doubled that quantity not only because of that because I have uh, increased the, the universal uh, constant which is universal velocity uh, limit to 372,000 miles a second time minus one second that's twice the speed of light I did though that for one reason, to correspond with relativity. I could could have went beyond that, and I did in one of my chapters, and I illustrate that in that chapter called quantum light speed theory, that speeds greater than twice the speed of light are even possible based on that phenomenon. That way, that 
structure of space that exists. Uh, I have a second book that I, I uh, hope will be published. It's called Coikia Warp Drive. Uh, it goes into the aspects of everything I just told you about warp space, some more, some more uh, detailed information about gravity. And then with that, I think, uh, or separate, I am uh, interjoining another book on gravity. A new version of gravity. I've taken all the, all the, the well-known theories on all this electromagnetism, uh, all the experiments and everything, and I've quantized it into another book, another book on gravity that illustrates the barriers of gravity, what gravity is, exactly how it works, and the aspects, benefits and the realization of, of what gravity means in a gravitational state against what I have written in my first book, Seagut, a non-gravitational state. Because of that, I've been able to create a new book on, on gravity, which is going to be very important. It's going to be upcoming. Either way, it's going to come out, I think, unless I die. But like I said, what's light have to do with with a mass object in a massless state or medium of maneuver. You know, I'm talking about interstellar space. Oh, I wanted to go back to the point of a standard theory of the universe. The standard theory explains the universe being developed all at once. Dark matter, uh, the universe, energy, all assuming from a void. Well, if you look up void in Webster's Dictionary, you find that it means unoccupied space. Okay. Dark matter is unoccupied space. If we turn off the lights, which is planets and everything, everything that has energy have nothing but darkness. God created light. He created the light or energy that allows for the growth of unstable energy. He didn't like that universe. He destroyed it. And he made a new one, a smaller one. And within that universe, he made people on Earth. And probably a lot of other stuff. He made the animals. You know, some, for once, for some reason, I think cats have e communicate by ESP. I have a cat. I've been tri tripping on that. How do they talk now? But my, my theory on that, I call it Epidis universe, expanding universe, that uh, over exceeds relativity beyond light speed travel. And I correlate on the idea that uh, the standard theory is also wrong. Dark matter is infinite. Uh, they say the universe is infinite. That's true. But the universe is dark matter. It's the 94% that is nothing, it's darkness. The other 4% is not the universe, it's matter. And it's floating in this dark matter. Which they believe at one time to be gaseous, but it's not. It's, it's non-reflective. Uh, it's just a substance. An unknown substance, undetectable, unseen, un but is measurable. Does it have pressure? Does uh, retain pressure? Everything is in it. A certain pressure. There's a, it's warped. And warped means it's a fabric, as Einstein indicates. But the dimensions of that fabric, Einstein did not uh, correlate or make an equation. Well, like I said, my name is Rod Kowacki. My book, Supertallic Electromagnetic Gravitational Fields. It's a 10 year study. I hope you will read it. It's on all bookstores, at least on the internet, uh, in all the bookstores. And uh, it's a must read book. If you're in science, you will.